Hi everyone, I'm Angie and welcome to Make It Monday. Today we're going to do some Starry Night rock painting. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is a rock, which in your kits we have rocks all set for you. Um, in fact, we're going to have a box that you can pick your rock from and that's what we're going to use as our canvas today. And the paint that we're going to use is just basic acrylic craft paint that you can find at the craft store. And you will have all that in your kit. So the first thing you want to do when looking for a rock to do rock painting is you want a somewhat smooth surface. Um, I have to thank Matthew at the library. He went in search of rocks for us so that we could do this project. Um, he did this in the fall so that he didn't have to dig through the snow to get them. So I'm going to use this rock today, um, but your rocks can be any shape, any size. Um, this one was that I originally did the sample on was just a nice oval, fairly flat surfaced rock. And that's the thing you want is you want somewhat of a flat surface, at least on one side of the rock. So the technique that we're going to use to paint this um, it's kind of like a drip and drag technique. What we're going to do is we're going to do drops of paint onto the rock and we're going to drag the paint across and then we're going to blend it with our brush. And the type of brush that I'm going to use is just a flat paintbrush. So let's get started with that. Um, I have picked six colors of paint. Um, to do kind of a starry night, you want to go from a dark and you want to end with the lightest tone kind of at the base and then we're going to come back in with black paint um, to finish it off. So you can see that I've got, I started with black, I went to a dark blue, I went to a mid-tone blue and a light blue and then a green and then the black was painted on afterwards. So we're going to start with dropping our paint on and your paint's going to come in a thing, so just pick up your paint with um, your paintbrush and put dollops of paint on there. So I'm going to put two dollops. So this is the black paint. The other thing you want to do when you're looking at your rock is decide what you want the top of your rock to be and the bottom of your rock so that when you put your colors on, you've got them on the way you want it. Okay, so the next I'm going to drop some purple. And I know the caps are kind of getting in the way of you seeing this real well. And then we're going to put some dark blue. And this is an extremely um, dark blue. Let's see, the color is indigo night. And then I want just a touch of this mid-tone blue. And this is a little bit older blue that I had in my stash. It's a little bit runnier than I would like, but it'll work for the purpose that we have today. And then we've got some light blue. And then I've got my green for kind of at the base here. I'm going to put that there and I'm going to drag that one there. Okay, so we've got our paint on our rock. Now this is just a scrap piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to use this to kind of drag the colors across. So I'm going to kind of bend, let's see if I can turn this around and do this so you can see this. I'm going to kind of bend my paper a little bit like this and just drag. And this is not going to be perfect. Um, I'm not going to have to face this towards me. Okay, so we're just going to put our paper down and we're just going to start to drag. And what this is going to do is start to blend the colors. And you don't want to press too hard. In fact, I pressed a little hard, so I'm going to come back across this. And all this does is kind of start the blend of paint. Now I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to pick up my paintbrush. And I don't want too much water on my paintbrush. And now I'm going to just start to blend. So I'm going to take that black. And we can always come back in and add color. Okay, so between each blending of color, I'm going to rinse my paintbrush in just some water. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to dab that off because I don't want too much of that old color. And now I'm going to start blending between the two. 
and the sides will get a little bit better as we go. And again, I'm going to rinse my paintbrush. I'm going to dry it off really well. And I'm going to come down between the blue and the purple. And this is going to seem a little thin at first. Um, like I said, we can always add more color, but we can't take it away once it's on there. I'm going to rinse my brush again. Come down between that mid-tone blue and the dark blue and start blending those two together. And I'll work on the sides of my rock a little bit more once we get our base coat on the surface. And then I'm going to rinse my brush again, dry it off fairly well, and I'm going to come down between the blue and the green. This is just a kind of an easy way to kind of blend your colors together. Okay, so also off to the side here, I have just a plastic palette. Um, this is just a plastic lid from an old cottage cheese container. That is really all you need. And now I'm going to start blending in a little bit of the color that I lost. So I feel like I lost a little bit of my purple up here. So I'm going to bring, pick up some purple with my brush and just kind of blend that in and try and bring it down the sides a little ways. And then I'm going to rinse my brush again because sometimes I get that black is very overpowering. So again, I'm going to pick up a little bit more and just kind of drag it into that black area and smooth out. I don't want big clumps of paint. I want it to be a real smooth blend. And I'm going to take the extra paint on my brush and kind of come down on the sides to fill in those areas. All right, next I'm going to go into my dark blue, my indigo blue, and I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And bring that down to the sides of my rock a little bit. And again, I feel like I lost a little of my purple, so I'm just going to take my brush without... Um, without rinsing it off, and I'm going to pick up just a dab of purple on just one side of it. And I'm going to blend, and that's going to kind of blend that blue and that purple a little bit. Okay, make sure I get all the way down on my sides here. All right, next I'm going to go to that mid-tone blue, which is this. And I'm going to start bringing that down a little ways. I want just a little bit of that brighter blue in there. Alright, now I'm going to go to my light blue. Pick up a little bit more of that. I'm actually going to drag that down into the green just a little bit more than it was. And then bring it down into the sides. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of drag it across where the two meet. Just to kind of blend that again. Blend down the sides of my rock a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up my green and blend that again a little bit into that blue. I don't want a ton of the green to show and some of that will get covered up by the black when we after we do our trees. So again, I'm going to I'm just coming down on the sides of my rock. just to kind of fill those in. And every rock is a little bit different. You may not, the sides of your rock might not be very big so that you won't have to come down on those sides very much. And again, I'm rinsing my brush 
And I have a little bit of blue on the sides that I need to add in here. So I'm just going to pick up some blue again. And I'm actually going to drag just a touch of that down into that green. I like the blend of those two colors together. Okay, now I'm going to kind of spin my rock because I can't see the top half. And I'm going to come in here and hopefully I didn't mess that up too much. I'm going to come in with just some black just to kind of coat the sides of my rock here. And you can always come in afterwards and touch up what um, the areas that once it's dry, if it looks like you missed some areas. So I'm just coming in with just black paint here and just going up the front side of my rock. Okay, once you have this the way you like it, um, I have one spot here where this blue is not. I'm going to just try and bring just a touch more of that in. Okay, and at that point I'm going to stop. And I'm going to completely let this dry. Like I said, once it's dry, you can always come back in and add more paint. But at this point, I think it's time for me to stop because you can overblend too. And just let it dry completely and we'll come back and keep going. Welcome back, everybody. All right, so we're going to continue on. Our rock is now dry. All the paint is dry on there. And the way you can tell it's dry is it's going to have kind of a duller finish to it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to draw the trees. Um, I am going to backtrack a little bit here. Um, if you have spots on your rock that are not quite filled in with paint, you can leave them like that. Um, if it's on the surface, you might want to go back over that with a little bit more paint, but it's easier to put paint on when it's dry, then you're building up the layers of paint um, than if you try to keep putting it on when it's wet. So if you have some spots on your surface that don't look like they're covered all the way, add some more paint, let it dry, and then continue on with what we're going to do next. So the next thing we're going to do is draw our trees. And I am no artist when it comes to drawing. So what I did is I went online and I looked up some rock painted trees. Um, and I kind of found this pattern, and so then I practiced on a post-it note just how to draw these little trees. So I'm going to do a little bit of that on this big white piece of paper so that it's easier to see. So I found three kind of styles of trees that I liked. Um, and every tree starts with just a straight line. So if you draw a straight line down, and then the first one is the easiest one to me. You're just going to take and do swish marks like this. And we're going to use a marker. And you're just going to bring these down. And as you bring them down, they're going to get bigger. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now, if it seems like you got some spaces in between there, you can take your pencil and just draw in some lighter ones so that'll make it look a little bit thicker. Trees are not perfect in nature so you just need to let go of the perfectness which for me sometimes is really hard and just draw your tree. So that's the first one and the easiest one. The next one I saw again it starts with a straight line and what they did is they put all the branches up and then they drew just branches off of that. And so then draw another branch and another branch and just all the branches face up. So if you just think about that, it's not that hard to do. And I actually was amazed how easy it was and how they they look like little pine trees. 
and you would just continue on that way. And as your branches get bigger down here, you can have, you know, a little more branches coming off of those ones to make it a little bit thicker. And you're just going to continue on that way. The third tree I found is kind of the opposite of this tree. You draw a straight line and then it kind of started with small branches similar to the first one, but then they would draw a bigger branch and like all the little branches would come off the bottom half of that. And you can have I, you can have them come off the top too. I mean, it's all kind of your preference. This is just it's we're trying to make this as easy as we can. Like I said, I am no artist. I am not a very good drawer. So when I have to go draw something, I want it to be fairly easy. So basically, it's just the opposite of this tree, except for everything faces down. So now we're going to move to our rock, and we're going to work on some of those trees. And what we're going to use to draw with is an ultra fine point Sharpie marker. And I am not great with a fine point paintbrush, um, so this is a good solution. It has an extremely small tip to it, so it makes it very easy to do this. The other thing you want to do is kind of look at your rock and kind of plot out where you want your trees. And I was having a hard time trying to figure that out. So what I did is I took a clear piece of plastic and I just drew a tree on there. So that if I place that clear piece of plastic over my rock, I can kind of see what that's going to look like. And I just drew one tree on here. Um, but then you can kind of move it around. So I will include a piece of plastic in your kit so that you can kind of draw on the plastic with the Sharpie and it also gives you a little time to practice your trees and then you can put your trees onto your rock. So I'm going to start with the easiest tree first and I'm going to kind of go off to the side here. And I don't want this first tree to be very big. So we're just going to draw and again I'm just going to put the swish lines in here and they're going to get bigger as we go down. And like I said, trees in nature are not perfect. And I want it to be a little fuller, so I'm going to add just some smaller ones in between the bigger ones. Like I said, this is not, it's not perfect, but you know, it's not meant to be. <laughs> okay, so I have one tree there. Now I think I'm going to do another tree kind of next to it, but a different style of tree. So I'm going to actually bring this tree down just a little bit. And remember, the base of our rock we're going to fill in black, so don't worry about your trunk being perfect. We're going to fill that baseline in with black paint. So just get your trees in there is what you want to do. So this one I'm going to make with the branches going up. I'm going to add a few small branches on there. Just a little couple nubbies just at the top there. And I'm going to add another branch here. And just add some little branches there. And it's okay if your branches overlap with the tree that you drew previously. Like I said, and if you want, practice on a piece of scrap paper first. If you don't feel like you're com comfortable enough to just start on your rock, just, you know, practice a little bit. It's okay. So I'll draw another one over here. These trees I kind of like to go from side to side when I do them, just so that I keep myself kind of balanced as far as... Um, getting my branches on there and not making them too big. I'm going to put one more down here. And one more kind of off the base there. 
And you can always extend your trunk down a little bit and you can make it a little bit thicker if you want. I'm just going to thicken that up just a little bit at the base. And that's my second tree. I kind of like to leave um, a center area that's just a little bit open just so that it looks like some lights coming in. Um, you don't want you can do just solid trees if that's what you want. If you want it to be a really solid thing, that's fine. This is your own piece of little artwork. So, I mean, do it how you like it. Um, so the last, another tree I'm going to draw over here. And I'm not going to make you watch me sit here and draw trees all day. So finish up your trees and then we'll come back to add in our base and our little bits of grass and then do the spatter. So go ahead and have some fun drying trees. And again, I'm going to put this out there too. Um, if you don't want trees on there, draw whatever you want on your rock. Um, if you want to do a little mountain scene, feel free to do that. If you want to just draw a word across your rock, go ahead and do that. It doesn't necessarily have to be pine trees. That's just what I wanted to do. So again, have fun, finish up. Um, add your trees or whatever it is you want on your rock and we'll come back to do the base layer and the spatter. Okay, now we're set to go to the next stage, which is our base on the bottom of our rock. So, spin this around. We've got all our trees in place. So now, to, before I put the base on, I want to kind of draw kind of a landscape for the bottom. And I'm going to use my marker to do that. And I'm just going to gradually put a line. Hopefully you can see this. Kind of how I want, where I want that base layer to go. And I'm going to kind of dip this down in. And kind of make it look a little bit hilly. And I'm going to come up this side and kind of connect in my little bit of trees. And that's just going to give me a guideline so that I can follow with my paintbrush. So I put some more black paint on my palette and I'm just going to pick up the black paint. And this is where a flat brush is really kind of nice because I can go right up against that line to start adding in my ground. So I'm just carefully kind of going along that line with my paintbrush. I'm going to spread that paint because a little bit thick there. I'm going to come over here and kind of follow that line that I had. Hopefully I have the camera zoomed in enough that you guys can see this. I'm trying to do it a little bit upside down because this rock is a little bit slanted. Okay, I'm going to come down on the side just a little bit there and just kind of brush down in. I'll get the rest of that in a minute. But we also want to add in what looks like some little bit of grass. And we're going to do that with a toothpick. So I've got some paint on here. And all I'm going to do is dip the tip of the toothpick into the paint. I'm going to try and do this a little bit upside down here so you can see that. And I'm going to take, and starting at where my base is, I'm just going to bring, whoop, I think my paint right on there. Just going to bring... some paint up and you don't want too much paint on there and we're just going to kind of add some blades of grass so it doesn't look like everything is flat so basically what you're doing is you're kind of just dragging some paint but you want to start at the base because it'll get lighter as you go up and if you're not comfortable doing this with the toothpick go ahead and use your marker you can do that with that too. I just was trying to get this 
a little bit more with the paint. And if you've got some, even some heavier paint, like I've got a couple of spots of heavier paint here, that I'm just kind of dragging the paint up so that my ground is just not perfect because there's grass in nature. And if you want to use your, your marker to do it, you can just take your marker Oh, I need to be more up and down here. And just add in some grasses just around the base of your trees there. Add some up here. So I'll try either way. Do what works best for you. If the marker works best and you're more comfortable with that, that is you know, go ahead and use that. Whoop, I need a little bit more grass. I'm just going to use the marker because I need a little bit more grass up here by this tree. Bring that down just a little bit. Okay. So we've got some grass in the foreground. Then I'm going to take my black paint and I'm going to kind of fill in this area so that this is all black on this base. So I'm just going to kind of take that line and just curve that down so it doesn't look like we're going off into oblivion here. And then I'm just going to take and fill in this base area with black paint. Just kind of smooth out this one edge here. All right. Okay. So again, we're going to let that dry and we're going to get set up to do the white spatter for our starry night. So let that dry completely. Um, probably 10-15 minutes should do it and we'll be back again. Okay everyone welcome back. So we are now ready to add the spatter for our starry night. Um, what I've done is put my rock in a what I call my spatter box. Um, when you do spatter, it kind of goes everywhere. So if I put it in a box, it just kind of contains all the mess. Your hands may get messy. Um, so if you have any rings or anything that you don't want to get paint on, I would suggest taking those off before you do this. So what I did is I took some white, just white acrylic paint, and I watered it down just a little bit so it's a little bit more fluid. Um, and there's two different ways that you can add spatter. One is to pick it up on a paintbrush and then tap it against your fingers so that the paint flies onto the, the rock. What I like to do is use an old toothbrush. Um, I like because it, it gives you a little bit finer splatter, but your hands get messier. So I'll let you choose which one. Um, so the other thing is I don't want my spatter to go all the way down onto my base. So what I did is I took a piece of paper and I just kind of tore an edge and I'm just going to place that kind of off the bottom half of my rock so that I don't end up with spatter all over the base part of my rock. All right, so we're going to start. I'll show you the paintbrush brush method first. So we're going to pick up paint on our paintbrush. Hopefully I'm down far enough that you can see this. And then you want to just take and tap the paintbrush against your finger. And you'll get some bigger splatters and smaller splatters with this. Um, so it really depends on how you want to do it. If you want to get some nice fine spatter, um, that's where I like the toothbrush. So you're just going to dip the bristles of your toothbrush into the paint. 
And then you're going to take your finger and you're going to run it across the bristles. And this is going to give you just a really nice fine spatter. And I like this a little bit better for a starry night. It's kind of, in some ways it's good to do both techniques because you'll get some bigger spatter with the paintbrush technique, but you'll get some nice fine spatter with the paint or toothbrush. So I'm going to pull that off and I want just a little bit more. I think I'm going to pull the paintbrush and pick up some more paint with that. And get some more paint with that. And I'm going to take off the thing because I can control ooh, a little bit better with this. The one good thing is if it gets too big a spatter, just wipe it off with your finger. So I have a little bit too much paint on there. I'm going to just tap this off to the side a little bit first. And then I'll come back in to get a few more bigger spatters. Like I said, this gets kind of messy, which is why I do it in a box. So just take an old box and add some spatter. Okay, I like how that looks, so I am going to leave it alone and just let it dry. Um, once everything is dry, and I think I can lift this out of here, and I'm going to get this box out of the way for a minute. Okay, once everything is dry, you want to seal your rock, um, especially if you're going to put it outside or anything like that. And there was no good way for us to get sealer into your kits. So what I'm going to ask you to do, um, the sealer that we use is this. It's just a low odor, clear finish, Krylon sealer. And it takes about 15 minutes to dry, um, and you need to spray it in kind of a ventilated area. So, like, don't spray it near a furnace or anything like that. We don't want anybody to start any fires. What we're going to do is bring, once you have your rocks done, bring them into the library, and we will spray them for you. Um, especially if you don't have, if you have this at home, go ahead and spray your own rock. That's fine. But bring your rocks into the library. We will be happy to spray them for you. Um, you'll have to wait about 15 minutes so we can let it dry before you handle it and bring it home. Um, but go ahead and do that. So that is our Starry Night rock painting. I hope that you had fun with it. I did. I learned something new, a little bit about how to draw trees. So enjoy, and we'll see you at the next Make It Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye.